Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and today we're gonna talk about books for Pride Month. To anyone and everyone that is celebrating Pride this month, happy Pride Month. I'm so excited to talk about um, LGBTQ plus books with you today. So I've broken it down to the LGBTQ books I've given five stars to. So you guys know how picky I am with my five stars. So these are books that I just absolutely loved, okay? so far. I make it a point to diversify my shelf and about the last year and a half I've really tried very hard to dive into all of my rainbow books that I want to read. So I haven't really been reading LGBTQ plus books that long. I know. I am working on it. I'm diversifying my bookshelf. I love reading all of these stories. I love getting to know LGBTQI characters. I I am so disappointed it's taken me so long to really get into this part of the market. So we're going to get into it today. I have seven books to share with you today and let's just get into it. I'm really excited, okay? So first we're going to talk about You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I talked about this book. I just recently read it like a couple months ago. So um, if you want to see like my breakdown of it, I have it in a previous video. Just kind of go, go clicking around and you'll find it. I absolutely loved this book. Okay. We have Liz Lighty in high school. She's just socially awkward and secretly gay. Um, she hasn't really like come out yet. And she's been focusing so much of her time and energy on her education and like getting out of high school and getting into the college that she wants to get into. And then she finds out that she doesn't have enough money to get into college. So she decides to run for prom queen to get a scholarship to go to school. So this is just like her high school journey of like the little snippet, the tail end of her high school journey of her trying to win prom queen and she's kind of like nerdy and she doesn't really feel like she fits in anywhere and there's a little bit of a love interest that just oh, it was so tender and so sweet and the whole book was just oh it felt so real it felt so real please read this book it's so good it's so good I understand now why everyone's been raving about this book because it's just it's just a beautiful little book. I love it so much. Okay, so yeah, that is You Should See Me in a Crown in a Nutshell. Next is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. Okay, so this is another one that's like kind of set in high school. So Suzette, our main character, she gets sent to a boarding school and she comes home for the summer to LA. And she has had to kind of conceal her sexual status or whatever however you want to put it she has had to kind of hide that at the school that she was going to because it's not very um ex widely accepted there and kind of like at the tail end of her school year she gets outed and so she's had this like horrifying experience of that and now she's come home and she's like i don't want to leave la i want to stay here with my family and the problem is the reason that she got sent away is because her stepbrother lionel got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and so they were all really wrapped up in trying to get Lionel settled that they needed to send Suzette away. So everyone's back together for the summer and Suzette is just, she's missing home. She wants to stay home forever. She doesn't want to get sent away and upon returning home she finds out that Lionel um, is going off his medication. So it's just a wild summer. It's a wild summer and there's also a love interest in this which is just so heartbreaking but yet really beautiful. I loved this book because we got a lot of representation in this book. We got, you know, not just um, lesbian but there was also bi representation in this book I think. And there were a lot of little side characters that were on the spectrum in some way. So I thought that was really great. We also get this sort of mixed family type thing because Suzette's mom is not actually married to Lionel's dad. They're like just, 
cohabitating permanently. You know, we, we've, we've kind of moved past this whole like societal marriage thing. And I, I really enjoyed seeing a book that actually like delved into it, that it's just kind of like the societal construct that we submit to. So I, I really like that. Then of course we have all of the mental health in this book, which was so great. Like it was so great. Just this book had so much, this book had so much, like, how could you not like it? It has so much stuff in it. So I mean, yeah, this was another one. Really great. I really enjoyed this one. Next, I'm going to talk about Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie. Wow. Okay. I'm just, this whole video has just got me so happy because I'm just talking about some of my favorite books. So, okay. We have Sky. She's in her 30s and she's kind of just prided herself on being like detached and nomadic and alone. She's just kind of grown into this being alone and she feels like she's happy there. And when she was in her 20s, she sold some of her eggs because she was desperate for cash. And so now she's in her like mid to late 30s and She's visiting West Philly, which is her original home, and she's just kind of visiting there right now. And her egg finds her. And it's like this 12-year-old girl, and she's like, hey, I'm your egg. Sky's world just kind of like, and it's so great, okay? Like, there's, there's also just a lot of different themes happening in this book. We have some really great representation. We actually have some trans rep in this book, which was really great to read about. And then we have Sky, who is unapologetically lesbian. And I just, I love the energy of Sky in this book. She also has so many trust issues and just mental health anxieties and things like that. That was also really great representation. We also have a bisexual character. Like we have a lot. We have a lot happening in this book. And on top of all of that, we also have more of this found family vibe, which I love. Skye has sort of built her own family around her because she didn't feel like she got the support she needed from her actual family. And then there's characters that are in Skye's found family that are also found family members. So that whole aspect of it just blew me away. Like I, I just loved the, the layers of it all. We also have a lot of like anti-black racism and gentrification discussions in this book. So I really like that aspect of it too. Like this book was just, I loved it. I loved it. Like <laughs> I'm going to say that about every book I talk about today, but this book, it's really, oh, it was really something special because the whole time you're just kind of rooting for Sky, but you can see how much damage she's actually taken on in the years and like a lot of her issues and how she just she's really just struggling between doing what she knows is right and doing what she feels safe doing and that's just it was so beautifully written it was so beautifully beautifully written and the ending just it got me like at the end I really thought I, it had me in tears, like just such a beautiful book. Like the representation was just, I loved it. I loved this book so much. So please, yeah, this is sky falling and I loved it. <laughs> the next book I'm going to talk about is We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. I feel like everyone's been talking about this book and this is also for a really good reason because it's also a very good book. So we have Marin who basically has just suffered a big tragedy upon completing her senior year and she just disappears. She doesn't talk to anybody. No one knows where she's gone. And we're coming into Marin's life just as she's getting into winter break from college. She hasn't spoken to anyone from her past. She hasn't spoken to anyone from high school. Like no one even really knows where she is or what she's doing. And her friend Mabel comes to visit her, which is like her secret love. Yeah, comes to visit her over winter break at college at her dorm. This was just such a sweet story, but it was also such a sad story 
No one told me when I picked up this book how devastatingly sad it was going to be. It was a heart wrencher. Like, oh, this book just had me crying like the whole time. It was an excellent book, but it was just not a happy book. You know, there was so much sadness in Marin and her character and what has happened to her. And she's really just trying to put herself back together. But she's also like 18. She doesn't really know how to put herself back together. She doesn't really know who she is after all of this stuff happens to her. She doesn't really know what she's supposed to do, who she's supposed to be, where she's supposed to go. It's, wow, wow. It's, it's very low on representation for me, um, but the story is just so heartbreakingly real and beautiful and tragic and I loved it for that. I loved it for that. So yeah, that's We Are Okay. Grab all the tissues for real. Next we're going to talk about Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. This book, wow, just like, <sighs> Joshua Whitehead is an Ojibwe Cree that is also two-spirit and he typically um, writes collaborative pieces and things like this. So I was really, really excited to see this as a standalone book to read it. And let me tell you, it was just great. I mean, Johnny Appleseed, Johnny is a two spirit that lives off reservation. Uh, and he kind of makes his living doing, um, cyber sex work. We all got to make money. Okay. And this was really just a whole journey of Johnny growing up not really being accepted as who he is and so trying to find his place among his people and also trying to just find his place in the world. And this story was just so raw and real and beautiful and tragic. I mean just lots of hardships. Lots of hardships throughout this book. It is a very highly sexual book, I would say, so I wouldn't really recommend it for younger readers. I would recommend it for an older reader, but I just, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. It really was a lost and bound type of journey. And even at the end, we're not, it's not like a full circle. You know, it's still, you can just feel the unfinishedness of it. Like the book was finished, but it wasn't the end of Johnny's story. You know what I mean? And I really, really loved that. Joshua Whitehead, the writing is just, it's so hard. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but it was just, it was so raw and real and I loved it. So you wanna check out some Two-Spirit Indigenous, you know, representation? This, I loved this, okay? The next book I'm going to talk about is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. If you like the multiverse, this, this book just, it was so much more than anything that I expected. So much more than anything I expected. Like the representation here, I mean, it's, it's okay. The representation's okay, but the story is so good. It's like a sci-fi sci-fi fantasy or sci-fi dystopian. I can't quite, it's a little, it's kind of a fine line for me. But Kara, our main character, is a world walker. So she jumps through the multiverse and they're like collecting information and things like that. So she's supposed to just be like kind of undetectable. And they've made it so that you can only walk on a world where you are no longer alive, basically. And so Kara is one of the best jumpers there is because there's not very many worlds where she's actually alive. She's had a bit of a rough life and we really get into what her life was like. Like why all of her doppelgangers or whatever you would like to call them were not surviving in their own worlds. The story was just, wow. Like just the whole idea of it blew my little brain. Okay. The whole idea of it was just so fantastic. And I loved the story and it's very like action packed and sad and heartbreaking and 
the characters, the way that she was able to write the characters, because y you have to understand, like, we're dealing with the multiverse, so it's like, you know, we know this character, but not this version of this character. So, Akaya Johnson had all of this stuff. Like, I mean, we're seeing Kara, but we're seeing Kara again and again. It's slightly different versions of her everywhere, and slightly different versions of all the characters in her life in other multiverses. So, all the applause, okay? Because this book was just so, oh, it just sucked me in. Like, couldn't put it down. I had to finish it. I really loved it. Like I said, the representation is not like fantastic, but the story is so good. The story is so good, okay? If you're if you're just getting into pride books, if you're if you're kind of, if you're cishet like me and you just you need to dip your toe in this book. Enjoyable by anybody, okay? Like enjoyable by everybody, okay? Read this one, it's so good. Okay, the last book I'm going to talk about today is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This was my first like dive into diversifying my bookshelf and wow this book so we have Felix who is transgender male transgender boy I guess because he's like in high school so transgender boy they're going to summer art camp or something like that and someone posts a bunch of pictures of him before his transition and like exposes his dead name and it's just a whirlwind of emotions and hardship and friendship and enemies there's just a lot of angst in this book and a lot of feelings and a lot of talking about how you identify with yourself and how you identify to other people there's also like the relationship between Felix and his father is very strained be because of his transition. And so Felix and his dad are just struggling with everything. But Felix is also struggling with how he identifies, you know. And so there's this internal battle of, well, am I really a man or am I, am I identifying as something else? And the whole time, Felix is just fighting the opinions of others about how he identifies. But he's also fighting his opinions of himself as how he identifies. And you can just feel how hard all of it must be. How hard it all must be to feel all of this inside of you and also feel all of it outside of you at the same time. It was just such a beautifully written book. I think it did a really good job of talking about how some people like to label their sexual identity and like have a hard name for it. This is me. This is who I am. This is an all-encompassing statement of me. And then how some people don't really need a label. They don't need a word to describe how they feel on the inside or the outside or anything like that. And so we have these really great discussions in this book about things like that. This book was just so sweet and so beautiful and just, there were some really great moments. There were some really great moments of just heartbreak and fear and, wow, case and calendar, come on. Like, I feel like everyone talks about this book. I feel like this is a really big book that people are like, hey, read Felix Ever After, but it, it really is, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of like wrap up a little bit here at the end, kind of like give you the highlights. Um, you Should See Me in a Crown is YA. So is Little and Lion, technically is YA. Sky Falling I, is an adult book. Like, Sky is an adult woman with adult woman problems, you know? So if you're, if you're not looking for YA, Sky Falling. Sky Falling, not YA. Um, we Are Okay is also a YA book. Johnny Appleseed is not a YA book. Johnny is, um, I think like in his late 20s maybe. Anyway, it's not a YA book and it is sexualized so I wouldn't recommend it for younger readers. The Space Between Worlds, I don't really remember 
if it's a YA or not. I feel like it's not. I don't feel like the main character was a young adult. There's not a lot of like sexual graphic detail or anything in it, like nothing like that. Um, but there's also not like blindingly adult content in it or blindingly young adult content in it. You know, I feel like The Space Between Worlds could um, just, it's it's a book for everybody, honestly. I feel like it's a, it's a good book for anybody. Um, Felix Ever After is a YA book because Felix is um, a young adult. So yeah, that's kind of a little wrap up for you. I don't know. Sometimes um, I feel like a lot of LGBTQ books target younger audiences because, you know, some of them are just like finding yourself stories and like coming out stories and, you know, loving yourself for who you are, which are great, oh, great stories, great, great stories. But some of us don't always like to read young adult books. I get really burnt out on young adult books uh, because I'm not a young adult anymore. <laughs> I am not old either, but I'm not a young adult anymore. And so sometimes reading young adult stories just kind of um, gets old for me because it's it's harder for me to relate to them because I'm not a young adult anymore. So yeah, I loved all of these books. I'm so excited that I got to share them with you. I hope you guys are all having a terrific Pride Month. Remember to diversify your bookshelf even when it's not Pride Month. Do it all year round. There's so many books. Like this is only like a teeny tiny portion of what is out there. And it's only a small portion of what I've read. Like <sighs> there's so many good books out there. There's so many books with so much great representation out there. Like mix up your bookshelf, throw some of these. You don't know what you're missing. Honestly, you don't know what you're missing. Like <sighs> So I hope, I hope you liked this video. I loved making this video. I love talking about books that I love. So, you know, it was an easy video to make. Please hit all the buttons down below. Um, I post every week and let me know if there's books you think I should read or if there's something you want me to talk about on the channel, leave me a comment. I'm all ears. I'm all about it. And that's all for me this week. So I'll see you later. Bye.